it's insane um, seeing the evolution after prohibition. So it's just a new form of the fight. In Ireland, cannabis is an illegal drug. The quality is often poor and the prices are high. Also, under Irish law, cannabis is not even recognized as having any medical benefits. But even so, an impressive summit about the medicinal use of cannabis was held in Dublin this month. Politicians, scientists, activists, and patient groups from around the globe came to Dublin to talk about the future of medicinal cannabis. There are a large number of people who use cannabis as a medicine and who risk prosecution by doing so. And it seems to me that if we have the opportunity to change the law to help those people, we should do so as quickly as possible. This is something that should be fixed now, could be fixed now, and we should just get on with it. And there's a lot to talk about. America has opened up the door to a new industry. As of 2016, Canada, 25 American states, and many South American countries have legalized medicinal cannabis for treating a range of illnesses, from multiple sclerosis to Crohn's disease. The main problems are the differences in approach towards cannabis between countries and the allowance of change despite international law. Looking across Europe, we, we are very much behind. It seems to me inevitable that we will adopt some kind of reform because that's what's going on in America, but the timescale involved could be very long unless we do something to speed it up. America is moving to a regulated market for all cannabis use, recreational and medicinal. While in Europe, most countries have strict regulations towards medicinal cannabis and a total ban on the recreational use. Different policies and there's different regulations, so in every country you have to apply to a different set of rules uh, with regard to products, product availability, but also quality, uh, the number of products you can bring, and that is, that, that is an issue for producers when they go global. These differences create a market whereby producers of cannabis from Canada and the United States are way ahead of the Europeans. Regulations and general standards of how the plant should be treated are still not in place. The way I see it is that standardization means that you agree on what is quality. How do you identify quality? How do you know something is safe? I don't think it should be possible in the near future to have the same cannabis tested by three labs and get three different results. That is not necessary uh, and it's easy to solve by agreeing how to do it. Currently, the United States cannabis legal industry is worth six billion dollars. Big money taking over the industry while small growers are being pushed out. The most frustrating thing is the moneyed interests that seem to be swarming in and drowning out all of the voices of the activists that built up the industry. So in certain cities, medical patients have had all of their personal cultivation rights stripped from them and are now either going to become criminals or are standing up and are suing the state and city. Former news reporter and owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, Charlo Green, is now facing 24 years of imprisonment. Cops raided her club twice and made six undercover purchases, allowing them to charge her with serious criminal offenses. If you know a law is unjust, it is your responsibility to stand up and do something against it. So, what do we do? Are we going to allow patients to grow their own? Or are we going to have government-controlled systems whereby only state-sanctioned companies are the sole allowed producers? Most of the governments now are saying we want licensed producers, we want a regulated system. I think we're heading forward to that. As long as people abuse the system of home grow, which happened in Canada, governments will not be happy to allow that. And you see it, you saw it on the panel here this morning, the German and the Czech government, uh, and even the Croatian government, all say, no, 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 we're not going to do home grow. At the moment, only extract and encapsulated is available in pharmacies in Croatia. And it's not regulated by the law, it's regulated by a guideline suggestion by the Minister of Health. Germany will install a cannabis agency and uh, that means growing cannabis in Germany under strict conditions and with high quality pharmaceutical uh, quality 
uh, that will be also part of this uh, law which is now discussed in the parliament. With the new German law, the court ruling earlier this year, whereby judges were ordered to issue a permit for a 52-year-old MS patient to grow cannabis at home, is now terminated. Because he was not, he cannot afford this medication uh, by himself. He has to pay more than, I think, more than thousand euros per month. So the, this was the decision by making by the court. But if this comp uh, if this new law comes into uh, action then it will be a different situation. Because of international drug laws, countries are forced to set up government-controlled systems, working in collaboration with strictly regulated companies and not allowing patients to grow their own cannabis. Well, I think one of the things that are discussed here a lot today is, is what about everybody just growing his own stuff? Why do we need standardization? Why can't I just grow my own plant in my own backyard? And to that I would say, that personally I don't have a problem if one person grows his own plants for himself, but as soon as you start to produce for others and you are making decisions for others based on what you think is right, I think there need to be standards. And those standards should be the same for everyone in the industry. So then you are becoming a mini pharmaceutical company. If you don't want that, then do it for yourself. Questions now more than ever arise. When are we going to change international law? How are we going to regulate cannabis and the interest of big money? And why aren't patients allowed to grow their own? More and more patients are coming out in the open and telling the world what cannabis is doing for them. Moving and incredible stories. Like Tom Curran's story. If I was a religious person, I would call it miraculous. Within 20 seconds, her body just relaxed and the spasm disappeared. So it gave us back a quality of life. Your source of cannabis news.